This is the business renovator once again on a frosty winter morning. What I want to talk about today is what are you reading? Really, what are you reading? Um, is it good stuff or is it bad stuff? So what, what I want to do is I drop over to uh, my buddy Brian's book. Just hang on with me, guys. I want to pop this book cover up. Here it is right here. So uh, Customer Delight 365 is 365 days of uh, a unique quote, Brian's take on it, and uh, the start of the business renovator pretty much every time. So the quote I wanted to look at today uh, is, defeat is not bitter unless you swallow it. That's worth repeating, I think. Defeat is not bitter unless you swallow it. That's by Joe Clark. Now, Brian's take on that is, Defeat is wearing a blindfold in a rose garden. If you believe your eyes, you might think you're in a black hole of despair, but the rose garden is still there, even though you can't see it. Success in life and in business is often right in front of us, but it's shaded by our own doubt, insecurities, and poor attitude. Brian says, the next time you're faced with a challenging customer, ask yourself, Will I accept defeat or take off my blindfold and see the delight? Defeat is always a choice. Delight is always a choice. What's your choice? That's my question at the end of it. So what's your choice? Which is a great segue into uh, one of my favorite books. I don't have the fancy graphical uh, representation of it, but I can hold it up to the camera. And it's called Smart Talk. Now, this is the current cover of it, and it's written by Lou Tice, who's no longer with us. He had an impact on the world that was just uh, amazing. Uh, 30 plus million people around the globe. He helped the Irish uh, Catholics and Protestants get together, stop killing each other and get along. He helped uh, people that were on welfare get off of welfare in the US. He reduced the recidivism of um, the penal system in the US again. He helped in uh, South Africa with the apartheid. Um, just And he helped me. Huh? A local Canadian guy, um, many times over. Big fan of his teaching. Uh, it's not unique to just him. It's a bunch, it supports all of the other philosophical teachers that I, and psychological teachers that I like, trust, and uh, follow. This is just one of my favorite books that I read on a regular basis. Not this particular one. This one's special to me, uh, even more so, because inside it is signed. Can you see that there? Oops, look at that. I'm screwing up the background. I'll fix that here. So that's Lou Tice's signature. Let me just put him over there, get some more lighting on here, see if we can get that to go away. That should fix it. So um, here's my version of the same book. Uh, oh, let's upside down. Smart Talk by Lou Tice. Now, in this particular one, let's... It's dog-eared. I actually had to glue it back together. I broke the spine a few times, and uh, I have uh, notes and writing in it and post-its and bookmarks and all sorts of stuff. But the key to all of everything is, uh, if you go back as far as Earl Nightingale, we become what we think about most of the time. And smart talk is all about that. So what conversation are you having with yourself on a consistent, regular basis? Lou suggests, that's the author of this book, he suggests that uh, the only discipline we'd need to have in life is to decide what we want to have, be, and do. So in an ideal world, what would we like to, what, how would we like to show up and how would we like the world to be where we want to hang out? So if you're into racing horses or doing music, uh, writing books, coaching people, running your business, uh, not-for-profit foundation, something bigger than you is what he suggests we all do. And the discipline we should have is to decide what that is, write our affirmations or declarations, how some other people uh, introduce them to like us in the world, and do um, a couple of times a day at a minimum. So at the early part of your day when you're probably just work, waking up, Start thinking about those uh, declarations, affirmations, and 
the ideal life that you would like to, to grow into. You, even if you don't know how to do it, that's actually even better. But the discipline would be to imprint it. So there's a formula that he taught to me and many, many others. It's actually in the book, Smart Talk. And that is I times V equals R. So that's imagination times vividness equals our reality. If you go back to the quote that I read at the beginning uh, from Brian's book, um, it was talking about if you if if you have a blind drawn, you won't see the rose garden. But Lou teaches in respect to that is we act not in accordance as to uh, the life as it is or what we believe, but we act in, pardon me, I, I messed that up. Let me start again. I'm human um, after all. So it's we act not in accordance as the truth as it is, but actually how we perceive it to be. And going back to the quote of Brian's in his book where he talks about if you have a blindfold on, you won't see the rose garden. So metaphorically, um, Lou says the same sort of thing. Um, change what you look at, change the way you're talking to yourself, use smart talk, uh, make declarations and affirmations towards who you want to be, where, where you want to go, and what you want to make happen. So do it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Now, if you're struggling and you've got, you're in the valley of despair, and you're not sure what's going on, you might want to leverage that imprinting process more frequently. It, there's no harm in doing it more often. There's harm in not doing it at all. And ideally, the best recipe as a minimum, as a, the only discipline we need to do is to tap into our uh, super conscious mind or our creative subconscious mind or the infinite intelligence, whatever else you want to call that, and see ourselves at our future best. Um, recently, I had an opportunity to experience that for me again. So I have an opportunity to work with a client with um, about 30 salespeople spread out across a large region. And it's going to be, a lot of it's going to be done virtually just because of the, the situation we're in currently. And I was trying to figure out what we could do to maximize the value for them to get the uh, most out of the virtual experience and at the same time reach some goals that they have for themselves as they go through this training program. They want to turn their leadership team into a coaching team and learn and implement and imprint and make the content we're going to go through as a group second nature. Well, I was talking to somebody about something totally different. Actually, I have a mailbox office for another company of mine where mail goes to, obviously, that's why it's a mailbox office. And uh, I was checking to see if there's any mail that I needed to come and pick up and take care of. And, and we had a conversation about some other stuff. And as we were talking, right on this post-it, I wrote the basic concept of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Um, you can't see it because I don't know why, because it's yellow. Isn't that an interesting thing? But anyway, breakout room, leadership team, group leaders, uh, Dale Carnegie training, Go back to my life experiences, what I've done before, and take bits and pieces of that and put them together. It provided me with the ideal solution to the question I had, which was a perceived problem. But looking at it as from a solution-oriented mindset, what I was able to do was come up with a way to provide massive value, uh, give them what they were, were asking of me to help them become better coaches at the leadership level, sales managers, sales directors, so that they can inspire and encourage and mentor their own sales team. So I'm really looking forward to it. So what are you reading? Let's uh, check in with the people that are popped in here. There's a couple. Who's here? Hey, it's Kelly. Kellen, it's Kel from the Kel and Shell Show, my buddy from California. Good morning, Kellen. Man, you have a ton of energy. You're everywhere all the time, it seems. You're magical. And Ron, uh, smart talk. Good day, coach. That's me. Uh, yeah, smart talk. Is that like a smart cat? I, actually, I, that when I saw that commercial for the Super Bowl, uh, I think it was last year. I think it was last year's Super Bowl. Man, that made me giggle. Uh, yeah, I knew the accent was... Uh, put on by everybody, but it made me giggle. It's funny. I, I like how you guys can take the Mickey out of yourselves and turn it into something uh, beneficial. So what are you guys reading? Kellen, what are you reading? I know you're writing a book, but what are you reading or watching? 
whose podcast? Put it in here if you're watching somebody. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, because uh, it's going to be out there in Facebook, in YouTube, and on Twitter. If you watch this and you've got a book or a podcast that you would recommend people uh, tune into or read the book, pop it in um, either here now or in the hashtag replay. And if you like what this is all about, please pass it around, share it out. Kellen, I'm getting better at what you do. Remi reminding myself to share it with other people. Um, maybe there's an idea in here that somebody would gain um, the piece they're missing that they hadn't realized. Just like me talking to somebody else about something totally different and uh, having a solution to a problem that I had, perceived problem. I knew it wasn't really a problem. It was uh, an opportunity to expand my knowledge. So here comes a couple of books, Invisible Solutions. Who's that by, Ron? I haven't heard that, but I'm going to go check it out and see what it's all about. I actually have a, 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 a cool application or an app called Scribed. Uh, I don't have the affiliate link that saves me a ton of money. Just kidding. If anybody was to subscribe and buy a membership, I get one month free. Uh, and, and you get to uh, have access to a number of books that you don't even actually have to go out and buy. And you can have um, a, a ton of things in there. Audiobooks, written books, uh, papers, all sorts of cool things. Um, some people like to have the hard book themselves. Uh, but with my iPad, which isn't anywhere near, I, I can tap in and look for all sorts of stuff. Matter of fact, Jeffrey Gittimer, um, a number of his books are there. A number of his books are there in um, audio and some are in also in the written form. So let's see what Callan's talking about. Stephen King on writing. Stephen King on writing. I hadn't heard of that one either. I'm going to go check that out. No, that's probably important for anybody who's looking to write a book. Um, and there is some value in writing a book. Uh, many of us have a story that uh, when told could elevate and save somebody's uh, life, their marriage. Uh, help them get to the dream that they um, are dreaming and turning it into a, a, a rea reality. Now, I'm not an author per se. I do write articles in a um, in a newsletter, but I don't actually have a book that I've published. I've had a couple of people suggest I do that, but I haven't got around to it. I haven't made it a goal, I guess. And then Ron saying, uh, I think Dan Shapiro, that's who you, oh, the author for Invisible Solutions. Let me see if I can quickly type that in and see what uh, the wonderful browser tells us. Invisible Solutions. Just hang on while I type this. No, of course it didn't go where I wanted to. Hang on, guys. It's coming. It's coming. I'm typing slow, but it's coming. Invisible. It's, I, I got the invisible man, but that's not what we're looking for. The author is, you're absolutely right. Stephen Shapiro. Shapiro. Absolutely. That's what it is. Good job, buddy. I should have just trusted you, right? Not that I didn't. I was just confirming. Um, yeah. That's all I got. It's like for this morning. I've got a ton of other stuff, but I really try to keep these under 20 minutes when I don't have a guest. So my favorite book is Smart Talk. Uh, it looks like this. Um, it's all about, and actually one of the stories in here, his wife, Diane, at the age 50, went in and had a full-on physical because she decided she wanted to live another 50 years. So she was wanting to make sure that the foundation was, uh, to, to do that was in place. And what they found out was um, she had cancer and it was a type of cancer at the time it was discovered about 36 years ago. It was one that had, uh, that the doctors hadn't had much success with and the way that she found about it, uh, found out about it from the doctor over the phone, um, actually pissed her off and, um, she beat the cancer. And if you wanted to find out the whole story in smart talk, uh, Lou Tice, his, her husband and partner, talked about how they uh, beat the cancer by using what they were teaching around the world to other people. So if you want to increase your ability to get shit done or your causative power or your efficacy, um, and those who follow me hear me say that word a lot, 
just because it's had that much of an impact on me. But really, it's all it's about is getting your stuff done, things that you hadn't thought were kind of out of the realm of possibility. Reminds me of a client of mine who's living now in Mexico. And the reason she's living in Mexico is she had that as a dream, and I helped her find a way to turn it into a goal and helped her go down the path and break through the barriers that she had self-imposed. Her goal was to be able to run her business as a, uh, an accounting firm in warmer climates half the time. That was the goal because she lives up here in Canada and we have winter and that means we get snow in our regions and sometimes it's really freaking cold and really freaking cold is anything below zero. No, I'm just kidding. It really cold is like, well, when it's minus 40, it doesn't matter it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, it's the same thing. Freaking cold. So her goal and her wish actually at the time when we first started was to go to uh, a tropical place and run her business and grow it there with her kids. Um, in a warm climate. She just thought it was a, a wish, a pipe dream. And uh, working together, we found a, a way for her to make it happen. She she did it all work, obviously. Uh, it's her dream. My goal was just to help keep her feet to the fire and keep her pointed at her compass, pointed at the goal that she wanted to have happen. So I'm happy to say it only took eight months of working together and she was able to make that dream happen. Since then, she's uh, found a way to stay down in the area. She's actually in Mexico, living there full time. And she sold her practice. So what she found out was she really didn't want to be in the accounting business. And so her whole life changed because what she thought about changed. And Smart Talk, this book I would keep talking about, Smart Talk by Lou Tice, is one of those books. There's many. This is one of my favorite books. So as I was saying, what are you reading? Hey, look who popped in. Eric Bam. What is he saying? I haven't read this. We're going to see. I've got a warm heart because I know you. No, you have a warm heart because you are you, Bam, because you are you. And um, you, you're doing lots for a lot of people around the world, and that's fantastic. The only thing I wish you would stop doing is posting those beautiful pictures of pizzas as often as you do. I'm getting. I'm putting on weight just looking at the images, I tell you. Got to be careful what we think about because what we think about most of the time is what we become. So I don't want to become a pizza. Boy, they look good. I know some of them you've made, but some of them are your own clients. So that's a wrap for me, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you ever have a question for me around business or life or mindset, because this is all about uh, sales, marketing, and mindset. And today I wanted to talk about mindset because it has such a big uh, impact with me, um, Lou Tice, Diane Tice, and Smart Talk. It's just one of the books, a bunch of the people that I've met and leaned, leaned on to step up and be bigger and brighter than I was a bunch of years ago when I first met them. Thank you for being here. Oh, there's a, wait, I can't leave, Kristen. I can't leave without saying hi to you. Hey, look at that. That's very kind of you, Kristen, to say, I, I love that. You are a great coach's coach. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It means a lot to hear coming from you because we work together on a regular basis. So share this out if you uh, found a nugget in there and um, I'll be back again. You just never know when. Usually it's like 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. See you later.